Okay, here we are in beautiful downtown Windsor, Ontario for this week's edition of the Comic Book Syndicate Weekly. Uh, this week we're doing Wire Hanger, uh, as well as... Deadpool Core. Deadpool Core and Brightest Day, issue number one. Border City, thank you. Windsor, you too. Don't forget where we parked, eh? Okay, what is our first comic book today, George? Uh, the first comic we're doing is Wire Hanger by IDW. Did you enjoy it at all? Uh, it's hard to explain, but yeah, I think I, I think I started to enjoy it, but by the end, I sort of really changed my mind on that. Is it something you would recommend? No. What about the art? You're usually an art guy. Do you like the art at all? No. Really? Well, I think the art. It almost seemed lucky that it worked out, and it, when it did, um, it was a little hard to follow. Okay. And on to our new face, Amanda. What did you think of the comic? Um, that was my favorite comic that we read today, actually. Um, I think that the art was very Tim Burton-esque at the beginning, and I really liked how it started out that way. With a, I had like a little boy who was. Um, it seemed like he was uh, diving into his psychological. Um, his mind state, and I think it was a psychological thriller. And I really liked how um, it ended up revolving around a female, and to start off the, the female, they, they threw in a shoe that the little boy found, and that kind of initiated the, the rest of the story. So, do you have any friends that uh, do you think you would recommend this to? I would recommend it to some of my friends, some of my um, Tim Burton deep, dark <laughs> friends. <laughs> okay. Michelle, what did you think of the comic? I liked it. Um, uh, I, I was kind of on the same train as everybody else where I did sort of think this was just going to be a simple thriller, but I liked how uh, the artwork... The artwork took a lot of risks towards the end because sometimes it was in this like broad strokes and it wasn't that detailed, but I liked the expressions on the faces and I liked the coloring. I thought the coloring was really, really cool because sometimes everybody's face would just be in blue or green and I think that that... I liked the atmosphere and the mood and the techniques because amplified how I was feeling when I was reading it. It looks like it sort of goes into this detective thing towards the end, but um, yeah, and I agree with Amanda, it had like a, a Tim Burton sort of feel, which I really appreciated because I'm a deep Tim Burton person, so So you yeah. give this to like some of your, maybe some of your friends that like Tim Burton films? Yeah, and, and, and more, more than that, I mean, I, I would give it to people who are into horror stuff, I would give it in to people who are into suspense or thriller or, Really, any, any, and it's an experimental comic book, so I'd give it to anybody who's just sort of looking to get into something like that. Okay, and Jolie, what about you? Did you, did you see any resemblance to Tim Burton's films? Um, I actually didn't make that connection, no. Uh, the, the art was definitely, it had a more, I mean, now that I think about it during the review, it reminded me of the, the boy with the clam shell head, I can't remember his oyster name. Oyster Boy. Yeah, Oyster Boy. The, the, uh, the way they, they drew the wire hanger. Yeah. I don't know what to call him in the beginning. The way they drew him as a boy when he was thinking about his past, that's what it reminded me of. But um, uh, other than that, no, I didn't make the connection. So you recommend it? I recommend it, but it would do well to read it again just to kind of put it all together. Because right now there's a lot of things happening, there's a lot of people going on, and I just, I'm really confused. <laughs> what book are we doing next? Uh, the next book we're reviewing is Deadpool Corp, number one. Have you ever read any Deadpool stuff, especially from the Liefeld era? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I haven't read anything about Deadpool. I've only experienced Deadpool in a wretched film called Wolverine <sighs> Origins. What did you think of the era of this book? Because to comic readers, this is infamous. Ah, uh, yeah, it's Liefeld, and I really, uh, I've only ever seen covers uh, by Liefeld, and um, it's really 90s-esque. It looks a lot like Turner, and it looks a lot like uh, Finch. Uh, I think the inker does him a lot of justice in the, this book, and I'm really surprised. I've never actually opened a Liefeld book to, to look at the art, but I actually really enjoyed it. Oh, okay, so you could, it was legible. You could follow along. Yeah. Storytelling. It was surprisingly really clear, yes. Not too much ink, not too much color. <laughs> <laughs> Would you recommend it to... To who? Wide range of people? Yeah, it was one? really, really funny. It's really, it's really well written. I would recommend it to anybody. Everybody. Okay, we're going to move yeah. on. Did you laugh? I did laugh. Yeah. I did laugh. Um, I like Deadpool. I'm a big Deadpool fan. And thanks for bringing up the movie. Horrible, horrible, horrible. 
Uh, but if you want to see Deadpool in all actuality, then this is a good comic book to start out with because it has it has his humor um, and it and it's funny because it it I, I feel like it's almost a parody within its own genre too because cheesy moments that you might find in in in, in uh, normal superhero comics uh, they're in there, but they always in Deadpool comics take this funny funny twist with it and it's it's good. All right, next someone who knows Liefeld's work really well. Rob Liefeld has his art has not improved since he was 18. He still draws like a teenager. He'll never improve. People that he has hired on as protégés have come and gone and become superstars. But whatever, fine. The art is horrible, but for some reason I still don't mind it. The art is what it is. Besides his actual anatomy, uh, Rob Liefeld's storytelling skills are pretty poor in this. There's a, there's a scene where they steal the guy's bike and fly it into the ship and then take off, but it's actually confusing the way it happens. Oh, he didn't, he didn't write it, he just did the art. What I mean is, but his storytelling, his job is to show in oh, the art how okay. it happens and it's very confusing. Would you recommend it? For sure, Deadpool it's absolutely good for Deadpool fans. Okay. Yes. This is the first Deadpool comic I read. I, I mean, it's one of the first comics ever that I've read. I don't read too many comics, but... Um, That's not what you said to me on the text message, but... <laughs> well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I enjoy comic, uh, comic book movies and I, and I have read some, but nothing, I mean, nothing really like that, not anything really so spacey all... like Deadpool. There was, there was one um, humorous moment in there that kind of made me laugh, and there was another thing that where they, they mentioned Buzz Lightyear, and I was like, Toy Story? What? <laughs> but, um, I don't think that's what they were referring to, but uh, I, it did make me laugh. It, it, was, it was comical, so I would, I would recommend it. I mean, I enjoyed it, and I didn't know anything about it, so. Can I ask, did you like the art? Did you think it was good? Uh, I didn't think it was that great, but it wasn't terrible. I mean, he's better than me. <laughs> Amanda, what comic book do you have next? We are going to look at the comic book Brightest Day, issue number zero. And you had something to say about the female representation. Yes, um, that was what stuck out the most for me is that all of the females in the book were very sexualized. Um, most of the time they were naked, not that you could actually see uh, their, their parts, but I mean it was portrayed so that you thought that they were there. And um, always about the, the feminine figure being rescued and being saved, mm -hmm. being put in trouble and you need um, the good guy to save her from the bad guy, and I just really noticed that about this comic a lot. And how did you feel about that? Um, I, I mean, it makes for a good story. People are, are entertained by, you know, seeing the pretty girl rescued and being put into a sticky situation, and it's entertaining. I enjoyed it, but um, a little too much on, yeah. on just focusing on this one girl. Would you recommend it? Yeah, it, it was good. I could see it being turned into, um, like, a TV series or yeah. something. Uh, going in, I, I honestly, I, I don't really know what's going on. I am glad that all these characters are back because they never should have died. But if they're just going to bring them back, why kill them anyway? Mm. Why, why even read these stories if they're going to be nullified a year later? Yeah. Um, as far as Amanda's comment, Jeff Johns, he has this weird obsession with gory violence, not just with women, but with men as well, but a lot mm. of times with women. And it boggles my mind. Why is it so popular? And did you think it took away from the actual storyline? Like, how was the actual story of the comic? It was distracting. I, I, did, I, did, I think everything he does, he, too much violence, too much sex. Uh, the storyline was okay. If you like the DC Universe, if you're a big fan, you like this. If you're a non-regular comics reader, you won't get anything out of this. Okay. George, sir, how did you feel about it? Uh, well, the art was amazing. Mm -hmm. I thought the art was great. It was very classic comic book art. Uh, Marsha Manhunter's back. It's awesome. I knew they were all coming. When it was called Black Knight, and there was a death ring. We all knew there was going to be a light ring and everyone was going to come back to life. This was not a secret. Uh, this was really particularly well done. I actually, with all the women and the nakedness, if you read the series before, the, the Blackest Night, everyone's loved ones are dead. The whole planet is about to be dead. Everybody gets saved. It's, to me, kind of, not amusing, I guess maybe amusing that they immediately all went and banged. Like, that was the first thing. Like, all their, their, like, all their loved ones were brought back and, like, the Aquaman scene too was the uh, the lighthouse, right? Yeah. And like the side of it is smashed in, like they were in such a rush to get. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's yeah. a hole in the side of where they live. Mm -hmm. Again, for me, it's Martian Manhunter. He's back, and they gave him pants. Nice. That was pretty Did you cool. continue reading this series? Uh, I'm going to because as a DC like a DC devout fan, um, you have to read it. I'm almost like obliged to. The final word goes to Amanda. I'd recommend it. Good art. Well, that wraps up another week of reviews. I'd like to thank Amanda Marshall for joining our lovely cast of ladies. And let me tell you, George, I have never looked so homely as I do today. Well, that's questionable. But thanks again for joining us. We're here at Biscuits and Gravy today. Thank you to Border City. And we'll see you again next week for most likely 
comic book reviews.